Hi everyone, here we are studying the subject Civil Engineering Project Management. Around the revision part, today I am going to start module 2 that is project crashing and codification approach. And in this session, today I am going to discuss about project crashing. Now we are going to study the concept of project crashing in module 2. Project crashing or crashing of project. The concept is known as time cost trade-off. The concept is very important which is a definite university question so study it thoroughly. Time cost trade-off is an important management tool for overcoming one of the critical path method limitations of being unable to bring the project schedule to a specified duration. So in order to overcome the limitations of critical path, being unable to bring the project schedule to a specified duration, we are using the concept time cost trade-off. The objective of Time cost trade off analysis is to reduce the original project duration determined from the critical path analysis to meet a specific deadline with least cost. So, the objective of time cost trade off is to reduce the original project duration. So, time cost trade off is introduced as a new tool for overcoming the limitation of critical path. In case of scheduling and the main objective of this time cost trade-off is to reduce the project duration. Now the objectives of time cost trade-off. First objective is to finish the project in a predefined deadline date. The second objective is to recover early delays. The third objective is to avoid liquidated damages. Fourth objective is to provide free CRE resources for other projects. Next is to avoid adverse weather conditions that might affect the productivity. And next is to receive an early completion as a bonus. So these are some of the objectives of time cost trade-off and also to improve the project cash flow. So to finish the project in an early manner, to recover the early delays, to avoid liquidated damages, to provide free key, re key resources for other projects, to avoid the adverse weather conditions, to receive an early completion as a bonus and to improve the project cash flow are the various objectives of time cost trade-off. Next is project crashing. Project crashing is the method of reducing the project duration by reducing the time of one or more critical activities to less than their normal time. Reducing the project duration can be done by adjusting overlaps between activities or by reducing activities duration. The crashing is achieved by allocating additional resources. Crashing results in increase of cost associated with the project. So, project crashing is the method of reducing the duration of the project. The project duration is reduced by reducing the uh, activity duration. Usually, crashing is achieved by allocating additional resources in the project and the crashing results in minimum duration and it increases the cost associated with the project. A term cost slope is introduced in case of project crashing which is defined as the increase in the cost of the activity per unit decrease in that time. It is an important term cost slope is introduced which is defined as the increase in the cost of the activity per unit decrease in that time. Next is actions for reducing activity duration. The various actions which are taken to reduce the activity duration includes first one applying multiple shift works. 
our time works offering incentive permits to increase the productivity working on weekends and holidays using additional resources using materials with faster installation methods etc so by applying multiple shift works and applying overtime by offering the incentive payments working on weekends and holidays using additional resources and using materials with faster installation methods we can reduce the activity duration also by using alternate construction methods or sequences we can reduce the activity duration in a project So the, here is a graph showing the time cost trade off. The minimum cost is equal to the optimal project time in case of time cost trade off. Here the yellow line, rep yellow curve represents the total cost, blue curve the direct cost, and the uh, black curve Sorry, the black curve, the total cost, uh, the uh, yellow curve, the indirect cost, and blue curve, the direct cost. Uh, the plot is by along the x axis, the crashing time is represented, and along the y axis, the crash cost is represented. Or the project duration is uh, represented along the x axis, and the cost is represented along the y axis. We can plot the total cost curve, the indirect cost curve and the direct cost curve. So in time cost trade off concept the total cost is increasing. Time cost trade off important terms associated with time cost trade off are normal time. The time required to complete the activities of a project under normal conditions that is under normal cost and time is termed as normal time. The maximum duration of the activity it is the normal time is the maximum duration possessed by an activity. Second one crash time. The minimum duration for a particular activity is the crash time. Next is normal cost. The cost associated with the normal duration is termed as normal cost and crash cost is the cost associated with the crash duration. Additional cost of an activity when time to complete it is shortened is required. This additional cost is known as crash cost and the crash costing increases the project duration decreases. As the project duration decreases the crash cost just increases. Indirect cost increases as the project duration increases. And the another important term is cost slope which is the ratio of rise to that of run. It is calculated as cost slope is the ratio of difference between crash cost and normal cost and normal time and crash time. Next is the procedure for crashing. First step is to draw the project network and perform the critical path method calculations and identify the critical path, use normal durations and cost for all activities. In the second step, compute the cost slope for each activity by using the equation for cost slope that is equal to cost slope is equal to crash cost minus normal cost divided by normal time minus crash time. In the third step, reduce the activity duration on the critical path which has the least cost slope and not been shortened to its crash duration. And in the fourth step, reduce the duration of the critical activities with the least cost slope until its crash duration is reached or until the critical path changes. And in the fifth step, in case when multiple critical paths are involved, the activities to be shortened is determined by comparing the cost slope of the activity which lies on all critical paths having shortened a critical path. You should 
adjust the activities, timings and floats for this purpose. And the sixth step is increase in cost due to activity shortening is calculated as the cost slope multiplied by time of time units shortened. If the minimum duration is to be found out, continue until no further shortening is possible and then crash point is reached. To find the optimum crash duration and cost, crash until an iteration gives project cost greater than previous iteration and take the results of penultimate iteration as the result. Next is minimum cost scheduling. Here I am listing out the procedure for minimum cost scheduling. The first step is to prepare the network diagram with normal cost, normal time, crash time and crash cost. The second step is to determine the cost per unit of time to crash each activity. In the step 3, compute the critical path and in step 4, shorten the critical path at the least cost. It is the simple procedure adopted in project crashing or minimum cost scheduling. While crashing the network, some of the points are to be remembered. The following points to be remembered while crashing the network which includes when multiple crit critical paths are involved, the activities to be shortened is determined by comparing the cost slope of the activity which lies on all critical paths. In case of two critical paths are there in a network, the activity to be crashed are different but one path has both the activities crash the common activity that is with the least cost slope among the common activities even if the other activity has least cost slope. The critical path must remain critical before and after a particular iteration although the number of critical paths may increase. So next I am going to discuss what is resource allocation. Anything that is used by an activity to get the work done is known as a resource. If these resources are limited, then the result more likely will be, there will be a chance of delay. So the resource allocation is used to assign the available resources in an economic way. There are two methods for resource allocation. They are resource smoothening and resource leveling. First one, resource smoothing. It is used when project is time constrained and resources are not constrained. Project completion time cannot be delayed even if the additional resources are required. It is a technique that adjusts the activities of a schedule model such that the requirements for resources on the project do not exceed certain predefined resource limits. The resource smoothing is adopted when there is limited time, enough resources are available, when there is a peak demand for resources, resources required for critical activities are drawn from non-critical activities. The slack time of non-critical activities is utilized. Critical activities should not be compromised. And the next step in resource, the next method of resource allocation is resource leveling. A project is resource constrained if the level of resource availability cannot be exceeded. Here the start and the end of the activities are adjusted to confirm resource availability. So resource leveling is a technique in which start and finish dates are adjusted based on resource constraints with the goal of balancing demand for resources with the available supply. Resource leveling is used in the following cases when there is limited resources, time cannot be prolonged, time can be prolonged, non-critical activities are distributed over the slack period if not critical activities can be distributed. 
So today we have discussed about project crashing and resource allocation. The two methods for resource allocation are resource leveling and resource smoothing. Hoping that you have understood. Study the provisions thoroughly. Work out more problems from project crashing. So, okay. Thank you. Stay safe.